You're listening to the National Oceanography Center's Into the Blue podcast, where we tackle some of the biggest questions facing our ocean today by speaking to experts and voices from the world of oceanography. Hope you enjoy today's episode. Hi, I'm Will, and today I'm joined by Will Pearson to talk about ocean bottle and how, how they're helping the fight against the impacts of plastic pollution in our ocean. Thanks for joining me today, Will. Hey, Will, it's great to be here. Good to always be with a fellow Will as well. Can't go wrong. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so yeah, what we do with the podcast is we always start with a, with a random ocean question. Uh, so your question is, what was your first memory of the ocean? Um, good question. So I, um, I grew up, actually, I grew up in the UK, in the countryside. So I was, I was actually nowhere near the ocean. Um, but my, um, I'm half Norwegian. Um, right. So my grandparents actually lived up in northern Norway. And uh, we were lucky to sort of spend our summer holidays up there. Um, so we'd go, yeah, we'd go sailing every summer. I think I was probably, it's probably like three years old or something the first time I went up there. <clears throat> and um, I think my first you know, real memory was we were out in a dinghy in the fjords and we had a kind of um, looking glass where you could look um, below the water and then see what was going on down there. And that, that uh, I really remember that quite vividly. Um, <clears throat> I think those those times up there just yeah they they really kind of kick started my love for the ocean. Cool, that's really cool. Um, so yeah, obviously you're you're the co-founder of Ocean Bottle. Uh, if people don't know, before we before we go into sort of Ocean Bottle itself, do you want to talk us a bit about sort of your your journey to to being where you are today in terms of your career? Like, we well, obviously said you know you had a love of the ocean since since you you were young. But so did you always envision envisage yourself sort of working? with the ocean as such yeah so i um had a sort of interesting journey i haven't really had much career experience as well before started in fact it's almost right. zero um <laughs> so yeah no we i um i uh, studied engineering um and i that i had that kind of passion for the ocean and and i think wanted to at least go out and explore it and sail it for as long as I can remember. I had this kind of bizarre obsession with boats as well. <laughs> um, and yes, yeah, so I did my engineering degree um, and I then actually decided, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it. I'm going to kind of take that passion and, and dive in. So I actually went and worked as a deckhand um, right. for a year. So we, we started in the Mediterranean. So we started in Malta. We sailed out to the Maldives in the Indian Ocean, um, took almost a month, um, sort of, you know, not setting foot on land. And it was, yeah, it was just an epic experience. Um, and it was actually on that boat that the owners of the boat, they bore around a thousand Evian bottles for their family that really? Christmas. Um, and they had a family of about, I think it was four people. Uh, and I was just, this is crazy. Um, you know, they'd have a sip, uh, I'd have to kind of pour it out, crush it. The bottles were being flown in from Europe. Um, and then, yeah, basically they got handed over and uh, burnt on a, on an island uh, called Tilifushi. So they just burn all the plastic and it just drifts off right. into the ocean. So that was um, a, a bit of an eye opener for me. And then, you know, loads of other things from Blue Planet to, to, to all sorts of things that were going on at the time. Um, but yeah, I did a couple of internships. I did some internships in, in solar energy, worked in a sports store. Um, <laughs> And then, yeah, came back to London uh, and quite quickly came up with the idea for Ocean Boss, actually. Um, and then we, we kind of just went all in on that. So that's my career journey. I know it all. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for, for people who don't know what Ocean Bottle is, do you want to give us sort of a, a brief introduction as to, as to what Ocean Bottle does? Yeah, I never, I never like to assume that people know what it is. Um, I mean, it very much does what it says on the tin. Yeah. Um, but you know, we, we, there's still a, a large amount of people who haven't heard of us. And I actually think that's really exciting because it shows, you know, how much potentially we can, we can grow and expand our impact. Um, but yeah, basically simply put, this is the ocean bottle right here. Um, so yeah, for every bottle that we sell, we fund collection equivalent to a thousand plastic bottles and weight. Um, it was a really simple concept at the beginning. It, it really revolved around the fact that all of a sudden people really wanted to do something about the ocean plastic crisis, um, but didn't necessarily have a way of ma making a meaningful difference. 
and doing something that was bigger than than just themselves. So that was it. It was one for one thousand. How do we enable individuals to actually be part of a global solution uh, to a really really massive problem? Um, so yeah, we spent you know a year and a half designing and developing the bottle because we wanted to make sure that this was a product that people would love, use every single day, uh, not only to like connect them to that mission, but also, you know, reduce their own plastic footprint as well. Um, so yeah, that in a nutshell, that's what we do. We, we fund loads of plastic collection projects all around the world, and I'll, I'll probably get into that. Um, but yeah, we're coming up to our billion bottle milestone this autumn, wow. uh, which yeah, means we will have prevented a billion plastic bottles and weights from wow. entering the ocean. That's amazing. Um... Were there, were there any sort of, when, when you sort of come out with the idea and, and sort of pushing that concept through, were there any sort of unexpected challenges you had when, when sort of doing that process? I almost, yeah, I, I almost don't think you can do a startup without, <laughs> without more than a handful of challenges. Uh, and actually, my, my dad said to me, whatever you do, well, do not start uh, a startup because uh, he, he done it and it's it's honestly one of the hardest things I think yeah. out there um, yeah we had so many challenges I think the, the hardest part was that we had you know no resources so it was myself my co-founder Nick and then you know we added on a couple of team members as, as we went but yeah I was down at the warehouse you know sending out the first batch of bottles <laughs> to the wrong locations <laughs> yeah. and you know making a real meal of it but we were doing everything from marketing to customer service to product design to impact to you know every single element of, of the business so yeah it's it was it was pretty tough yeah i guess as well because it is so intrinsically linked to climate change so that the plastic pollution must have felt a bit sort of daunting knowing you know this is a huge problem in terms of plastic pollution and you know it's, it's yeah it's, it's once you start to i'll be honest once you start to peel back that rug um and and you realize the scale of the problem and what's happening it's it's pretty daunting and you quickly end up feeling like the entire kind of global challenge is on your shoulders yeah um and you know i the hope is that we can really make a meaningful difference but we're not going to be able to to solve this challenge alone obviously yeah yeah definitely um so then are we able to go a bit in more into sort of say if one of our listeners who's listening to this now goes and buys a bottle, so if they go and buy a bottle, what impact are they having to, to sort of the fight against plastic pollution if they buy a bottle? Yeah. So how it works is, so we fund collection of 11.368 kilos of plastic per ocean bottle, which is equivalent to over a thousand plastic bottles and weights. Right. Um, we fund that, collection and we what we do is we basically set up collection points and waste management infrastructure in impoverished coastal communities all around the world so we've got right. projects in indonesia the philippines india uh kenya ghana uh egypt brazil uh, we're also launching in some small island developing states where they don't have any waste management infrastructure at all um and this is a huge issue you know if you think about the proliferation of single-use plastics becoming so ubiquitous um the distribution of them as well has has uh you know been exactly the same all over the world and what hasn't caught up is basically uh waste management and collection you know we're lucky at home that uh you put your recycling out and it gets collected and, and processed although badly yeah. and not not recycled but at least it doesn't get dumped straight into a waterway or a river and then get flushed straight out into the ocean. So by setting up these collection points, we're closing what's called the collection gap and we're preventing yeah. that plastic from entering the environment and the ocean in the, in the first place. Um, how it works a bit more practically is that uh, collectors um, in these communities can actually exchange their plastic for money. Um, so they get a, a financial incentive to bring the plastic in, uh, but they also get access to loads of other social resources and benefits um, from healthcare, education, um, to, you know, support with kind of financial security. So in some cases we have things like micro loans and stuff like that to really drive actually the social mobility as well yeah. uh, within those communities. Cause these are some of the most marginalized people in the world, um, that, that right. we're working with and, and supporting. Um, we collect 
loads of different types of plastic. So we actually collect, I think it's almost 16 types of plastic now, um, which is very important because if you only collect one type, you're not dealing with the whole problem. So we have a big focus actually on um, multi-layer film, sachets, uh, materials that have very, very low value and basically putting a value on them to ensure that they get collected um, and then don't end up in the environment. Right. That's amazing. I mean, that everyone loves a reusable bottle, but knowing that you buy one of those bottles is actually having that impact across the world is it's pretty amazing, isn't it? Like knowing that, you know, you've contributed to that. Um, oh, well, thank you. Yeah. So have you, have you seen it? Have you been out and seen any of that firsthand, like the, the, the effects it having? So it must feel quite enriching knowing that, you know, you'll have yeah. a big hand in that. Yeah, it's, it's you know, I think the scale of the challenge is, is quite daunting. Um, a thousand plastic bottles is, is a lot. Like if you put it in, you know, it's enough to fill a small car. Yeah. Uh, if you, you know, if you spread it out spatially, it's huge. And we, we do a lot of partnerships with companies. So if they're buying a thousand ocean bottles, they're collecting a million plastic bottles and, and weights. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, it's been amazing to actually see the impact firsthand. So we've actually set up um, one of the projects in India. We've actually set up uh, a sort of a huge collection center, which is where we aggregate all the plastic waste. Um, and we've actually, around there, we've actually invested in e-tricycles so that people can right. actually go around and collect much more plastic than they would be able to going by foot but also you know it's a much more pleasurable job yeah. uh, and it becomes kind of high profile it's sort of you know these people are actually the environmental guardians of their local community and yeah. it's, it's really cool to see so yeah i think there, there's a there's a balance in that one thing is it's really cool to see the impact we're creating and and the projects that we have live but then the daunting side of it is just the scale of the problem. And, and you know, we basically really need to uh, continue to scale up big time. Yeah. And it, it needs a lot of people to get involved um, and, and companies as well. So, but I, think, yeah. I believe we can do it. And in theory, you know, if, you know, in theory, we could fund collection of all ocean bound plastic in theory. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's uh, can we get there fast enough? Yeah, I suppose it is. Yeah, the, the scale... Of, of the problem you know we're, we're trying to tackle it is so large like since so that story you, you mentioned earlier about when you're a deck can you had saw all those bottles to now like has there been a visible impact like in terms of not just what ocean bottles are doing but the ocean as a wider sort of thing have you seen sort of a bigger impact or is it still kind of the same as it was back then at all so i'll give you i'll give you the bad news first and then i'll give you the good news second so the bad news is that globally we're still heading in the wrong direction. Um, so unless we can really change tack, and there's loads of things happening, which is why I'll give you some hope. Um, we uh, Ocean plastic is expected to quadruple in weight uh, by 2040. So that that's the direction of travel. So things are going to get much worse before they get better. And it's because of this, you know, a big, big contributor within that is is the collection gap. Yeah. Um, there was a report that came out for all those really interested in this uh, called Breaking the Wave, uh, where they basically charted a pathway to stopping that from happening or, or almost. Um, so with the right interventions, you know, we could actually stop 80% of that, of, of, of we could stop 80% of the flow of plastic, the annual flow of plastic into the ocean within the next 20 years. Um, and that includes uh, everything from closing the collection gap to you know massive uh, reduction and, and eff effective eradication of single-use plastics even if we don't have single-use plastics there's there's still a hell of a lot of plastic out there basically yeah definitely and i think it i think it's really positive in the fact that you know it's like from our side so not side you know we're our, our microplastics team and our, and our scientists are working on understanding the effect these plastics having in the ocean but also seeing the other side so like industry as example and 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 as well what what you guys are doing you know trying to get out it's nice to see that a lot of areas are, are pushing towards the same direction in terms of you know helping you know protect the ocean and, and and keeping the plastic out but also understanding the effects it's having right now i think yeah it's really 
positive to see that. And well, think, yeah, not yeah and I was going to say, you know, what's quite encouraging is uh, there's a hell of a lot of material innovation going on. Uh, so uh, Sean Sutherland, who's, who's on our advisory board, she started plasticfree.com, which is a materials resource library of plastic free materials for the, there's 160 million product designers uh, around the world. So it's basically yeah. a resource library for them to design using plastic free materials through to, uh, you probably saw recently there was the UK ban uh, on certain single use plastics just came into effect. Yeah. But that needs to be really broadened because that only covers, I think, you know, plastic cutlery and, and sort of styrofoam containers. So, you know, we need to continue to expand that as well. Um, but yeah, this is of vital importance. As you know, in your job, the ocean is the world's largest ecosystem. And, yeah. you know, it's the least funded sustainable development goal. And without life in the ocean, you know, there is there is no life. So it's it's imperative. Yeah, definitely. Um, so should, should we end it a bit on the future? So are there any exciting sort of projects ocean bot we're doing in the near future or starting now that you could sort of tell us a bit about yeah so we've got a few things cooking uh, over here in, in ocean bottle world uh one is that we've built a traceability platform around our impact so we've always wanted to show people you know where your plastic was collected so if you bought a bottle right now you could actually see where your plastic's been collected, when, who collected it, what they got paid for it, what type of plastic it was, uh, all of that that sort of data and insight into the, the difference that you've actually made. Yeah. Um, and what we're doing with that is we're also going to open it up to other brands and companies so that they can add a verified plastic collection to any product or service. So, you know, if you went and refilled for coffee uh, at Starbucks, you could fund a collection of 10 plastic bottles and weights. Right. If you bought a special edition wetsuit, you know, that could also fund plastic collection. So it enables us to kind of grow our collective uh, impact exponentially is, is really the goal. Um, and then we've got loads more, yeah, loads more product development going on. So whether it's materials innovation through to new product features and designs, uh, ultimately so that no one has an excuse not to have an ocean bottle uh you know we can we can really kind of hit all those use cases and, and make sure that it appeals to everyone that's great yeah no it's it's really exciting i think i think yeah ocean i think everyone loves a reusable bottle so yeah why not you know buy one and, and help protect the ocean as well um we'll also have links to, to ocean bottle on the website and things like that in our description as well so our listeners can can look at it more but um Thanks so much for joining me today, Will. It's a really interesting conversation. Yeah, we'll, we'll be closely following Ocean Bottle in the future, I'm sure. I'm sure yeah, sure fantastic. Thank you so much. And also, yeah, look out for our app as well, which is coming so that people can actually find refill locations around them uh, and actually find more plastic collection every day for free. So every boss has got a sort of NFC tag in it. So you can basically register it to yourself and then join in. And the goal is uh, to not just limit it to Ocean Bottle as well so that anyone can be part of it. Um, but no, honestly, yeah, thank you so much for having me on. It's been a, a pleasure. And uh, yeah, we just need to ramp up all these different efforts quickly. Definitely. Yeah, no, thank you for joining me today, Will. If you're enjoying Into the Blue, please make sure you follow us on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss out on future episodes. New episodes are released every other Wednesday on all major platforms and are also available to watch on the NOC's YouTube. See you next time.